Today we're going to take a hang on the back aquarium fish breeder box and convert it into a hang on the back house plant aquarium filter that will level up your biological water filtration giving you better water quality for your fish and give you more space for growing riparian or emergent plants without taking up space inside your aquarium. Now this is not a new idea. There are videos out there on this topic. Some of them show you how you can fill up the housing with various media to improve biofiltration, but there is so much more room for creativity with this idea, like using it for growing riparian plants, like pothos and peace lily, and so many more. And after we make this filter, I'll show you three different ways to power it. And some of these methods I'll bet you've never seen before. I know that I haven't. Let's start by unboxing this Fluval multi-chamber hang on the back breeding box. And there are other brands with a similar design that could be used. There's a lot of small pieces included in this kit, some of which we don't even need for this project. And there are instructions included for basic assembly. First, we're gonna add the spacers to the filter housing. This will help ensure the water flows out into the tank. The right side of the box is where the water goes in and there's a flow through divider to create a chamber. And in this chamber, we will put a few scrub pads for beneficial bacteria housing and some filter floss to catch debris. I cut the lid to fit only over the intake chamber and this will prevent splashing as the water goes in. And the rest of the breeder box can be filled with lava rock or leka, ceramic rings. You could even use gravel. I'm using a mix of lava rock and leka because I already had some. And I'm planting parlor palm in this media. Now, a variety of plants could be used. Lucky bamboo, peace lily, pothos, spider plant, hemographis, and so many more. So all of this media will house beneficial bacteria, but also help physically support the plants, keeping them from falling over. The first operating method for our DIY filter will be connecting it to an existing hob filter. Now for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm hanging our new DIY filter on the side of this tank. Ideally, I would hang on the back of the tank for long-term use because I think it would look better. After hanging our new filter in place, we're going to add height spacers under the existing hob filter so that it is sitting slightly higher than the new filter. And I'm just using a few pieces of foam. Next, let's take a piece of vinyl tube, half inch in this case, but it could be simply an airline tube if you want, and fill it up with water. And we're going to create a siphon. After both ends of the hose are placed in either filter, our water flow begins thanks to gravity. Now the flow rate is incredibly slow, which is just fine. We want slow water movement so that the beneficial bacteria and plants have time to feed on the nutrients as they pass through in the water. Next, I cut a notch in the existing hop filter lid for the hose to fit through comfortably. And the other end of the hose will go through the opening in our new filter, which was made by the manufacturing, and our lid placed on top of the intake chamber. In this application, I'm not using the filter floss because the water has already been filtered through the existing hob filter. And the hose is placed between the two scrub pads just to make sure that the overflow on our new filter is not obstructed. Always ensure that there is an overflow on these filters just in case the water flow gets clogged. For the next operating method, we will put our filter floss back in the intake chamber and this time we're gonna use a water pump to feed the filter. Now this pump that I have is too powerful for this 20 gallon tank, but it's what I have to work with. But I installed a flow control valve to reduce the water flow. Ideally a 50 gallon per hour pump or something like that would be used with built-in flow control. Using half inch flexible vinyl hose, the pump is connected to the intake tube, which is included with the breeder box kit and water is delivered to the intake chamber. And you can see that it doesn't take much to overflow our new filter, which is why a smaller pump is recommended here, as well as a slightly shorter vinyl tube so that your pump isn't sticking out so far in the tank like mine. But again, this is just a demonstration. 
For our third operating method, we're going to retrofit this new DIY filter to operate with an under gravel filter on a different tank. This breeder box kit is designed to be air pump driven and we will take full advantage of this design. After assembling the airline feed tube, which is included in the breeder box kit, we will then attach it to an airlift tube, which is part of the under gravel filter kit. I drilled holes vertically from the top inch or so down the airlift tube and cut out between them to make a slot which the assembled air tube from the breeder box kit fits down into like so. Now let's wrap a piece of filter foam around the smaller tube and stuff the foam tightly down between the connection of the smaller and larger tubes. A zip tie will secure this connection reasonably well and perhaps silicone would help reinforce this connection and prevent water from coming in completely. I may do this at a later date. Now this retrofitted tube that we've made will fit down inside the short mounted tube which attaches to the under gravel filter plate. Now I'm setting this up on an existing tank that already has the under gravel filter installed so there's only so much detail I can really show you but hopefully this is sufficient. But after all of the tubes are connected we now hook up the air pump and we have water flow. And again a slow steady water flow is the objective for this filter. Earlier I mentioned that this filter could give more space for riparian plants in a tank without disrupting an existing tank. I'm actually thinking of converting this whole 29 gallon to this filter system for three main reasons. The first reason is to save space inside the tank. Right now I've got all these riparian plant roots growing in here, which I've enjoyed, but I'm to the point now where I would like to have more room for underwater aquarium plants. Second reason is it would give me an interchangeable filter system. I could move the filter from one tank to another if I wanted without disrupting an established tank. And it would give me an instant riparium without having to undo anything that's already set up. And the third reason is if I just wanted to switch plants out from one tank to another, which I like to do from time to time, or if I need to take these plants outside and treat them for insects or disease or whatever, I could do that without risking anything harmful getting inside my aquarium. And we could even take this a step further and add a second DIY filter, just like this first one, next to it, and possibly link them together with a siphon tube like we talked about in our first method. And if your tank is large enough, you could even have three of these you know, hooked together with siphon tubes or even just individually powered. And that way you'd still have the, the effect of the entire back rim covered with plants. You could even remove the scrub pads and filter floss and fill the entire box up with the media and plants, especially if you're just siphoning off of an existing hob filter because that water has already been mechanically filtered. Now the filter floss is helpful for the air driven method because it keeps the water from splashing up too much and reduces some of this noise. This noise is a major complaint from many people about this breeder box kit but adding the floss does help muffle the sound not perfectly but it does help a good deal. There is still so much more that I want to do with this DIY filter. There's just so much room for creativity. Now keep in mind that this is not going to be the best mechanical filter for a tank. It is intended to be a supplemental biological filter with the added benefit of gaining extra space to grow riparian plants without disturbing an existing tank setup. Let me know down in the comments which of the three power methods for this DIY filter have you not seen before. And also, if you have any ideas on how to improve this DIY filter, I would love to know what you think about it.